Alrighty, ho, my peeps. It's uh, Wednesday afternoon, a little after two. I wanted to show you the glorious glimmer of my beautiful interference painted um, project here. Um, I just, I'm just digging it so much. I think it's so beautiful. I'm going to be working on the cornice now. That's this piece here that goes on the very top. But I wanted to show you the gorgeous mermaidy magic of this paint. You can see where the um, where the turquoise glitter has uh, gone to the bottom, and you can still see the beautiful glimmer of that paint. And so I need to, you know, stir this. I'll probably stir it 88 plus 88 times because I'm just so weird when it comes to the number eight. I count things in eights. Even my phone number here at the store, which I'm going to announce to you all now, is uh, 855-8888. Don't you love that? All about the eights. I was born on the eighth. I just eight, think eight's the most wonderful number. So anyhow, you can see how that um, glitter is beginning to work its way up into the pink proper. And when that looks like it's pretty well incorporated again, I will start uh, painting this thing. All right, you guys, so I wanted you to see the process here. Um, this paint is just flat paint that I got at the hardware store. Um, and I've mixed it two to one with diatomaceous earth. And then I've added some green um, glitter and some turquoise glitter. Now you don't see the glitter yet because all of this has to dry and then when I take some sandpaper to it, it will reveal the glitter. And this is only the first coat. This is going to be about a four, four or five step process before I get to the point where I'm going to put the wax on. So I just wanted you to kind of see what I was doing as I get started. Uh, Heidi ho my friends. Well, I am making progress on this bed. Um, this has been painted blue, then I painted it green, and I sprayed it with water. So that's kind of my first layer, well, two layers. Now I'm going to show you over here, where Nick's standing. This has been painted. I use kind of a dry brush technique. And then what you do is you take your water bottle and, oh, you're going to get wet. Nick's going to get wet. And you just spray the crap out of it. You get it nice and wet. And then what that will do is it kind of activates the paint underneath a little bit. And it um, causes all this beautiful drippy, runny stuff. Um, and you just let it dry. And then you're going to do another coat with either uh, more of this color, if you want more, or a different color. I'm going to... I think I'm gonna come up with purple as my next one. And then I have a salmon color that will be the last. So there you go. Nick, I'm gonna hand you this. Thanks. And I'm gonna back up. Whoa, almost dropped my phone. I'm gonna back up without tripping and give you an idea of that. Now, I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what the actual hell, Cheryl? That looks horrible. Well, it does look horrible and it will look horrible for the first, I don't know, the first three coats maybe, but hang on, you're gonna have to look at the brick wall for a second while I climb out of the inside of this bed. Okay, it is gonna look horrible for the first, I don't know, two or three coats, but you keep going over it, um, painting paint, uh, in corners or in the centers, putting in detail, uh, smaller uh, lines of paint that, that you then um, spray or brush off, and pretty soon you end up with something um, that is has a lot of depth and color. Um, like this thing, you're not going to see a whole lot of the blue and the green. That's the, that's the underpainting. Then 
The overpainted colors are the ones you're going to see more, the salmon and the purple. So, if you want to see this in action and people who do it, check out uh, Debbie's Design Diary. She sells this paint. I made this up myself. You can do it as a DIY, but she has her own paints. In fact, they're called DIY paints. That's the name of them. And so she's made up a, a chalk clay base paint um, that does what this one does. Um, so anywho, I just wanted to show you guys this part and I'm gonna continue painting. Okie dokie, my artichokies. We have got our third coat on. Um, see if I can get some better close-ups of the grungy crustiness of this thing. Let's see. I don't know if you can... That's not the best angle, huh? So I'm going to come over here. Well, okay, so there's the inside of the footboard. And come out here. There's the outside of the footboard. And there's the headboard again. Now, the next coat is going to be purple and there's going to be a lot of it. So when I put, I'm going to put probably two coats of purple. They're going to be dry brushed on. So it's going to cover a lot of square inches, but it's not going to cover deeply. So when I spray it, a lot of the purple is going to run down. It's going to pool up down at the bottom, but show these colors up in here as well. So there we go. I'm getting some really good runny effects as well. That over there I really like. It's really beginning to happen for me. So I'm excited. Id. I am excited, Id. Oh, you guys got to come look at this. Look what we did. We got that wall um, more or less covered. I mean, I've got a spot up there and this spot down here. I'm going to find something surprising to put there. I don't know what it's going to be, but it won't be carpet and it won't be um, burlap bags. It'll be something interesting but look how beautifully the black china closet turned out i even like my weird tie-dyed floor i was thinking i oh i've got to fix that no i think all i need to do is wax it a bunch of times it'll look cool so isn't that neat i'm so happy with the way that turned out so over in the here in the corner i put my those are display pieces and we stuck them back in the corner um, in the kitchen, I have my shipping table set up. That's that table there with the munch pack boxes on it. And I'm going to use that as a shipping area until I get around to remodeling this kitchen. So the kitchen will be a utility area to start with. Um, let's see what else do we do. Um, come over here. I'm rolling around in my rolly chair. Oh, we moved the... Uh, we moved that white counter and I have an area right there to go behind the bar and then there's a tall metal etagere thing that will have jewelry clustered on it. Of course this bed's going to go back to the wall so that's going to give me a much wider area for people to walk and so forth. I put my corner closet, sorry I've got bad, bad lighting here, get over here, way out of the way. So there, you kind of see it. I put my corner cupboard right there. That still needs to be painted, but I think that's going to be where it lives, at least to, to start with. Um, and, oh, and I'll show you in here too. Uh, Nick and I managed to get this pretty well organized. I mean, I've got piles of things here and there, but I know, I know where everything is. Um, and so forth. So this space is much more functional, much more functional than it was the last time I brought you in here, even though it looks more cluttered. Um, but that's okay. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, this is what we've done today. I think I'm just about ready to pack it in and head them on home. Well, I'm done with this first layer of uh, paint. It, it, well, actually, it was four layers of paint, but it's the first part of creating this painted bed. Um, I could stop right here and do a, a wax finish, you know, some dark uh, wax um, in the cracks and crevices and then a, a clear wax on top of that and just be done if I wanted to. I like the way, I love the way the colors have turned out. I think what I'm going to do though, my next uh, set of colors is going to be um, uh, what would you call it? Put on with a palette knife and then scraped off so I have some scrapey places. Then I'm going to go ahead and do a um, do the dark and the light wax. I may actually paint this with with a iridescent color interference paint. So it'll the colors will change, you know, as you walk around looking at the bed from different uh, different angles. I'm not quite sure. I know I'm not done yet, so we shall see what I end up doing next. Uh, good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, I think, and um, I just picked up some of this Johnson paste wax. I am going to use that on my bed when I'm done painting, which I'm not sure when that's going to be, but I want to show you something. So here is a 220 grit sandpaper. I want to show you how it changes the paint here. Um, it allows you to reveal some of the colors, oops, some of the colors underneath and gives it a more, gets rid of the See, like this is all crusty. This smooths out that crustiness. I've already done this section here. And you can see more of the color underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a light sanding. Then I'm going to um, wipe it down so I can take a good look at the color and then decide if I need to add any more technique to it or if I'm just going to um, just going to finish it as is. So we will find out here in just a minute. Okie dokie, it is Wednesday and I am almost done with my, um, with my thing here. I've got, obviously to cut it out, I, I'm going to do some detail work around this here. And I'm going to do some detail work around the letters. Um, then inside the um, the O, there's a little thingy that I have to paint in there. Both of them require it. But I'm just about done. So that is, that's where we're at on the sign so far. I'm really, really digging it. Now, let me show you guys the bed. I am so loving the way this is turning out. Pretty much I'm done, I think, with the bed. But there we go. It's got glitter on the front and as little, um, you know, little touches here and there. That glitter is actually, well, I'm going to show it to you more closely over here. It's little stars and moons. Isn't that neat? So I'm just... I couldn't be happier with this. Now I need to paint one of these that I can actually sell. I mean, this one, like I said, this bed's on its last legs, and if you tried to use it as a bed, it would probably fall apart. But as a display, what do you guys think? Am I going too far off the deep end, or do you think it's as cool as I do? Okay, so I'm done. I wish I had better light. Um, it's so much shinier in real life. Anyhow, um, here we go. So what I did last night is I gave it a coat of um, 
polyurethane varnish. The entire bed got, var uh, well, it's not varnish. It's polyurethane coating. And the entire thing got coated last night. Uh, I did one coat. I think that's all that it really needs. Um, so, before I can put this bed together and, you know, put the decor on it, um, I need to paint the back. You can see the, pa the back is just wood. I think I'm going to paint it white, and I might even do a decoupage on the back. I'm not sure, because it will be visible somewhat, so I want it to be bright and interesting. I love the way these little finials turned out. Um, okay, so the tub is done. I think it just turned out wonderfully. Look how you can get that interference color change effect when you walk around it. Um, even in this horribly dim light, it's very dim outside. We're getting a storm coming in today. And I obviously don't have overhead lights working yet um, in this room. So we're just dealing with the, what little lights coming out of the kitchen and from the other part of the room. Anyhow, see if you can get, see, uh, yeah, you can get a pretty good sense of how the colors show up in light. I think it turned out so neat. Um, I was trying to figure out where I want to put it and I think I'm going to put it over here where these uh, chairs are right now. Nick suggested that I use this corner cabinet for like bath bombs, um, any bath related stuff, candles and so forth. And then the tub will go right here where that line of chairs is under the window. So I think that would, I agree with him. I think that's the right place. And then of course I'll put, you know, soft goods, pillows and things like that inside it. So that's cool. Now let me show you where we're at on the sign for inside. Um, outside of a little bit of detail work, I think I'm done. Oops. Here. Let's see if we can get some light on it. Okay, there we go. That's a pretty good amount of light. So I think I'm finished. I'm going to do something where these little round white blobs are. Those are supposed to be pearls. So I might actually get some half pearls and glue them on for a three-dimensional effect where the pearls are. Then I'm going to have Grant cut the sign out, and I'm going to have him cut it out about, oh, I don't know, outside of the line. Then I'm going to seal, because this is, um, this is plywood, so I'm going to have him seal, or rather, I'm going to seal where it gets cut so I don't have these open plywood things. That'll all get sealed with um, latex, and then I'm going to paint with a gold, uh, thick gold glitter, um, the edging and then up, up to the line. So I believe that's gonna be finished. I also wanna use uh, dotting tools. I don't know if you guys have ever used those for painting nails or or rocks or whatever, but I want to use dotting tools and I want to dot an, a small dotted around the uh, lettering. And then where I've got my little rainbow effect um, things, I also want to do something, some kind of dotted uh, edging around that. And that will complete it. It'll just, you know, I'll put one coat of urethane on and we'll be done. So one thing I did, and it's again difficult to see in this light, but on the shell part, wherever it's light colored, I've put a, a chameleon color change um, on it. And again, in this kind of light, it's hard to see. But when daylight hits it, it will look like stripes. You'll see the stripes. But it's, you know, it's a pretty subtle effect. Anyhow, I had some paint left over, so I decided I would use it on this project here. This is just a random um, box 
It had, let's see what it had in it originally. It had California asparagus, our union brand. California asparagus, do we have a year? No, but it's not, it's not that old. Anyhow, I'm painting this entire box with my leftover interference paint that I used on the tub. I had a little bit left over, so I thought I would go ahead and paint up this box. I'm going to have um, a lot of these farm style boxes piled up for use as display, and they will all be painted. I'm not gonna leave anything, just its natural color, because I'm trying to, I am trying to, um, you know, bounce light around in this in this room as much as I possibly can. You can see the beautiful blue turquoise coating on that black um, buffet back there. I think that's really neat. Um, now, my floors. My floors have been a problem. But I think what I'm going to do, it'll be a cheap and an attractive solution. Going to scrub down these floors, get them nice and clean. Then I'm going to wax them and take a floor buffer to them. So I'll probably do a couple coats of wax, you know, before I open, and then maybe every three months, four months, I'll do another coat of wax. So it'll keep the floors shiny and smooth, they'll be easy to clean, and you know, it'll be an interesting effect even though it's nothing more than concrete. Uh, what else do I wanna show you? Um, Oh, I've also, I think I've come up with a solution for these tabletops here. They're just old ratty laminate. The laminate's coming off in lots of places. What I was thinking about doing is a collage on both tabletops, collaging the entire tabletop with old magazine pages, newspapers, um, just different pieces of paper that I thought was interesting that I've held on to for years. Go ahead and collage the entire thing, and then I'll take a piece, uh, rather, well, it will be two pieces, because I have two tables, of um, plastic sheeting, clear plastic sheeting, and I will stretch that over the top, and I will tack it up underneath here and trim it so there's no like plastic tablecloth hanging off. The tablecloths will be up under here, trimmed, nicely tacked down. So I will have really nice surfaces for doing crafts on that can be easily cleaned and also uh, will be interesting to look at when there's nothing on the table. So that's, those are the next do. I need to clean that filthy mirror because it's bothering me. Um, I had Grant and Nick, when they brought the tub in, I also had them bring a couple of kitchen pieces that I want to use as display. And they're over here. I had this little stove was in my yard. I wonder if there's anything living in it. Let's see. Anything in there? No, it just needs to be cleaned. Um, this has been living in my yard for probably 15 years, this thing. And I thought it was kind of cute and funky. So I think I'm going to go ahead and clean it. I'm not going to paint it. I'm just going to clean it, polish it with kitchen wax or something so it's shiny. And then also this refrigerator door off of a propane refrigerator that was up at a friend's house with this nice... Cervell silent gas. Don't we all wish we had silent gas? Anyway, it's the, the door. And this is going to be my display for kitchen magnets. Um, um, I'll figure out some way to hang, uh, what are those things called? Aprons, anything kitcheny. Well, this is going to be what we use for the display. Obviously, we've got to fix that that broken leg under there but i think this is going to be a real cute way to display kitchen stuff so i moved the piano in this part of the room um yeah but it's do you guys agree with me i mean is the magic coming coming is it beginning to ooze i think it is i think the magic is beginning to ooze a little bit so I just need to keep up with it 
and get, get as much done as I possibly can in the shortest amount of time. And, and we're golden after that. So I believe I'm gonna stop my update at this point. Look at you guys. Um, yeah, um, oh, it started raining. It's raining pretty good out there. Oh, that's nice. Anyhow, um, so I'm gonna hang around in the building for the rest of the day. I'm going to be, have my eye out looking for leaks, anything like that. Uh, a friend fixed a bunch of leaks for me, but that was before the last really good rain. This is, you know, the next really good rain since they did their roof repairs. I do have a very vulnerable spot up there in that part of the uh, room. It, is that wet or is that, is that just oil? Let's find out. Right up in here, that's just oil, that's not water, okay. I don't see any water coming through. Anyhow, you can see a lot of water damage right there. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this section of the room for the rest of the day and see if I have any problems. Um, if I do, then I'm gonna send, he'll go back up on the roof, do some more work, and I'm gonna get my heat gun out and I will dry this stuff out so I don't have to take it off the walls. So, I think I've probably blathered at you guys enough. Um, there's glitter all over my life. Glitter on my floors. <laughs> I probably have it in my hair and on my face. <laughs> all right, done, done and done. I will talk to you guys later, bye.